to get to today for him just because he is that much closer to the WBC and trying to get game ready as quickly as possible as the Blue Jays take the field. And the Pirates will have Chad Cool on the mound. He's someone who had quite a debut last year on Sunday Night Baseball, making his major league debut against Clayton Kershaw. He actually won the game, so a great debut, and he went on to have a pretty good season, posting a 4.20 ERA and 14 starts for the Pirates. That's pretty impressive, actually. You know, when And we talk about spring training, how the pulse gets racing, but how about making your major league debut on national? television against Clayton Kershaw. That's another level. So good for him, and he's looking to be a part of this Pirates rotation again in 2017. And we'll talk about the the Pirates. We'll get a chance to talk about them quite a bit because we're doing two straight games with them. But they're really intriguing. The young pitching on this team, specifically the sort of Canadian Jameson Tyon and Tyler Glasnow, who pitched, I think, yesterday and struck out the first five batters he faced. I mean, they've got some impressive young arms. I didn't realize that Glasnow had done that. That is really impressive any time of year because you're always facing professional hitters. They're trying to make their impression, too. So Glasnow, a, a fun one to watch. And today, cool, maybe more of a back-end rotation than the upside of some of these Pirates pitchers, but still someone worth keeping an eye on. That rhymes with Tyon. That was well done if you did that on purpose. Definitely not. <laughs> Regardless, Marcus Stroman is finishing up his warm-up pitches. We've got every Blue Jays game for you, uh, either on the radio or on the web. I know today's game is on TV as well. Joe Siddle and Buck Martinez have that call. Um, but make sure you keep it tuned here all spring long for every single Blue Jays spring game. This is number four out of 33 that they will play this spring. First inning is brought to you by your Toronto Ford dealers. Get $3,500 in rebates plus $1,000 in extended year-end bonus cash on the 2016 Ford Focus. Details at findyourford.ca. All right, you said it, Ben, that we're expecting to see a little more than a normal first Grapefruit League start out of Marcus Stroman. He is a guy who, and I was on the, uh, our flagship station, Sportsnet 590, the fan today, with Ben Ennis. We were talking about Marcus Stroman. He's a guy who's pitched with a chip on his shoulder probably since the day he was drafted, never mind getting in the major leagues. Um, and that's sort of what he's been walking around this spring. Again, a guy who, I don't, I don't want to say has something to prove, but certainly is using any doubts that he hears as big-time fuel. For sure, and you see it on social media for anyone who follows Stroman on Instagram, on Twitter. You, you see it. He's someone who's very motivated, had a good year last year as far as innings, but I think a lot of people would say that he has more to offer when it comes to ERA, maybe even you know getting more ground balls, more strikeouts potentially. We've seen that he has that potential. And he's getting ready to go here, and we are set for the first pitch of the game as Yuri Perez steps in, and Stroman's first pitch is down and away. For ball one. 109 p.m., the time of our first pitch here in Dunedin, Florida. It's 29 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry. 84 Fahrenheit. 10 pitch is poured in for a strike. 101. Back home in Toronto, according to Tom Young, it's 9 degrees, 48 Fahrenheit. So a nice day, I hope, back home in Toronto. Uh, and we hope we're sending some warmth back up north to you. Throwing into that compact windup. 1 1 pitch is swung on and missed. 1 and 2. The Pirates are wearing their spring training getups. It's black and gold, obviously, because those are the Pittsburgh Pirates' colors. But it's really weird that it's bright white lettering and numbers on the back. I was going to say the same thing. It doesn't feel like a very Pittsburgh uniform. No. One-two pitch is a breaking ball not chased by Perez, and the count is two and two. Gold on the front, white on the back. Interesting setup by the Pittsburghers. Here comes Stroman. The 2-2 pitch is down and away, and again, he doesn't get him to chase, and the count is full. I said it already, and I'll probably say it a few more times. It's a compact windup for Marcus Stroman. He just starts his delivery by moving that front foot backwards, and then a little kick and a fire, and the 3-2 is hit on a line snared by Justin Smoke. Off to his right. A nice grab by Justin Smoke using all of that 27-foot wingspan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a very nice play, and not what you're expecting necessarily off the bat of a right-handed hitter. It goes 
over to the opposite field and Smoke reaches out, makes the catch and Marcus Stroman gesturing over to his teammate there in recognition of a play well made. Yeah, that looked like a line drive that was headed into right field for a single and a 3-2 pitch at Yuri Perez hit the other way awfully hard off of Marcus Stroman. Now here's Starling Marte. And the first pitch to him is taken for a strike 0-1. It'll be interesting to see how Stroman works with Jared Saltolamacchia today. New battery combination and someone who's very likely to be that backup catcher for the Blue Jays this year. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Off-speed delivery from Stroman. And Marcus comes equipped with a little bit of everything on the mound. He's got a dazzling array of pitches. An arsenal that when he's throwing for strikes, he is very tough to square up. He misses down and away with that pitch. One and two. And you mentioned that quick delivery. That was even quicker, it looked like. A very quick step to the plate there. And that's one of the things that last spring he worked on as far as trying to keep hitters off balance. Here comes the one-two pitch. Bounces in. Ball two, two and two. And we've seen this now. Two straight hitters from Stroman. Gets ahead and then trying to get hitters to chase. Has let them back in counts. Again, early spring is the second battery he's faced. You don't expect the stuff to be super sharp. The 2-2, two -two, off speed, misses again, low and away, 3-2. and two. But it's easier to lay off those pitches designed to get you to chase if you start them off the plate or if they look like balls out of a pitcher's hand. Full count for the second straight hitter. And here's a 3-2 pitch to Marte. It's hit on the ground to third. Petit in, even with the bag. Throw it on to first. Got him. Two down. Already a contrast defensively compared to yesterday when the Blue Jays, particularly on the left side of the infield, were having trouble converting those batted balls into outs. And it was such a strength for the Blue Jays last year. Now they seem to be finding that rhythm again on defense. Yeah, important to remember, too, yesterday, uh, the, uh, Richard Urania making two errors and watching a couple other plays. Uh, the defense was absolutely shaky for the Jays yesterday. But important to remember, it was not really the guys who are going to be asked to make those plays in the major leagues. And that's something that I, I think always needs to be stressed in spring training. When you look at results, those results are often caused by people who aren't going to be part of things. Swing and a miss by Gregory Polanco or a foul back to the screen. Well, the first pitch to Polanco. He's the left fielder. Three hitter for the Pirates. Great young talent. It seems like there are a lot of people for whom you say, like, the sky is the limit, what this ball player is capable of doing, especially when they haven't really had a long big league career yet. 0-1 is up and in, spins Polanco back, 1-1. But this is a guy you can absolutely say that about and be serious. Absolutely. You, you think about all the different tools that a ball player could have. Power, he's got it. He's got hitting ability, speed. He can play defense. So you put all that together, and, and you can see why the Pirates are very encouraged by him. 1-1 pitch, swung on and missed. Marcus Stroman comes at him with a changeup. Stayed straight. Polanco was early. Gorgeous pitch. It's 1-2. Marcus Stroman has thrown 15 pitches here so far in this first inning. Nothing, nothing. Blue Jays and Pirates were just underway. Two out, nobody on. The 1-2 to Polanco. Down and in. Ball two, two and two. Looked like Stroman was disappointed with himself at missing with that pitch. Blue Jays are 0-3 to start the spring. Pittsburgh Pirates are 2-1. Stroman with a little Johnny Cueto hesitation there and misses outside. Ball three, three and two. And in a lot of ways, spring training is the time for experimentation. Here in the top of the first inning, we've seen Marcus Stroman with the hesitation delivery. We've seen him do a little bit of a quick pitch, and it seems as though he's using this as a canvas for him to try to get ready for that season. Yeah, he did it last spring, too. Here is a full count pitch to Polanco, and it is strike three call. Marcus Stroman... Goes to a full count on everybody, but has a 1-2-3 top of the first. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Pirates, nothing, and the Blue Jays coming up. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network and MLB.com. 
in here Monday through Thursday exactly. with us in the booth. We're looking forward to that. Uh, here in Dunedin for three of those games. Today, obviously, uh, Wednesday against the Tigers and Thursday against the Phillies. Also, tomorrow we will be in Bradenton, Florida, down the road at Lecom Field, the newly uh, minted Lecom Field, amid some controversy, by the way, wow. in Bradenton. We'll have to hear about this. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get into it more tomorrow, but it used to be called McKechnie Field. It's been McKechnie Field as long as I've been coming down to spring training. And this is my 17th spring training, uh, named after, I believe, a civic leader in Bradenton. And uh, this year they sold the naming rights, and they didn't tell the McKechnie family. And there was, uh, they were not happy about that. Kevin Pillard takes a first pitch strike from Chad Cool. Here, starting off the bottom of the first, nothing, nothing. Blue Jays and Pirates. Cool, the tall righty. His 0-1 pitch is swung on and hit back to the mound. Cool quickly off the mound to get it. Flipped to first to John Jaso Jingleheimer Schmidt. And there's one away. Now here's a quiz, because I said it in between innings. Do you remember what LECOM stands for? No. What does it stand for? Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. Wow. Lee they were Com the big winners. Field. That's right. They bought themselves naming rights to a ballpark. Who knew? Here's Jose Bautista, two for three yesterday. Takes a first pitch strike from Cool. And I, I said yesterday on the Twitter, Ben, it would have been weird, very weird, not to have Jose Bautista in camp this year, almost more so than not having Edwin. The 0-1 pitch is down and away 1-1, one and one, but I thought, you thought, pretty much everybody thought that the marriage was over after last season. Yeah, absolutely. I remember at one point we were on Jeff Blair's show estimating what the chances were of a return. 1-1 one, one pitch to Jose is down and away. And I think it, this would have been in December. I think I said less than 2%. Yeah, something like that. I, I'm sure I was there too. Yeah, and it's pretty remarkable. But here he is, and I think the reception that he's gotten so far from teammates and, and fans suggests he's really welcome back. He swings and he fouls that ball right back to the screen. He left, but he didn't. He was a free agent available to any of the 30 teams in the major leagues. But uh, back here, it's it's as though the continuity continues, and he's going to be a big, big part of what the Blue Jays are trying to do this year. 2-2 pitch, swung on, fouled away. Breaking ball that got in on him, and Jose was just able to steer it into the seats to stay alive. Yeah, that wasn't a home run swing right there. A bit of a defensive effort to just foul the ball off and prolong the at-bat here against Cool. Bottom of the first, nothing, nothing. Jays and Pirates, a gorgeous day in Dunedin. 2-2 pitch is low. Half swing, he does not go. Jacob Stallings, the catcher, wants a check at first, but... Home plate umpire Marty Foster says not so much. And the count is full. Fifth batter of the game, fourth with a full count on it. The pitch is popped foul out of play. That got right in Batista's kitchen. And he's able to fight it off. Jose Bautista and Marcus Stroman, the two guys in this game who will be playing in the World Baseball Classic. So they kind of want to ramp up their preparation a little hotter than most. That's why Jose's playing a back-to-back -back game. And he takes strike three. Good breaking ball there from Chad Cool That froze Bautista. And by the time he saw that was going to come back into the strike zone, it was too late. Yeah, and even if he's striking out, he can still get the chance to look at live pitches. Yesterday, he seemed to have his timing down, hitting a couple balls really hard. That's important for him, not only as he prepares for the season, but in the WBC, he's in a pool that's going to include some very good pitching, and this is a chance to warm up for that. Yeah, like Ryan Dempster and Eric Gagne. <laughs> I was thinking more Julio Turan and Jose Quintana. Jared Saltalamacchia, the switch hitting catcher, takes the first pitch. Low from Chad Cool. Two out, nobody on. This is Saltalamacchia's first at bat here in front of the crowd in Dunedin. He played yesterday in Tampa. 1 0 pitches, swung on and missed, 1 1. And I don't know about your first impressions, but mine, at least seeing him behind the plate in that first inning, this is a large human being. Very. Homered yesterday in the split squad game against the Yankees as well. 1-1 one, one pitches. A strike called 1-2. and two. He takes up a lot of space behind the plate. And it can often be tough for guys like that to be that agile back there. So we'll see how the defense goes. 
One, two pitches high, ball two. He's not noted as an especially great defensive catcher. The value comes in the back. Yeah, exactly. And he is a big guy, like you were saying, especially compared to Russell Martin, even other Blue Jays catchers like Josh Tolley, Deonor Navarro in recent seasons. 2-2 two -two to Salty is outside, and the count is full. He even looks big compared to Justin Smoke, and that's saying something. Back-to-back -back switch hitters in the lineup here in Salta La Macchia and Smoke. Full count pitch. Swung on and missed. Salta La Macchia strikes out. So the first inning goes three up, three down for each side, and we go to the second. Nothing, nothing. Blue Jays and Pirates. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. New Scott's Long Response 911. Right now, so I'd love to hear from some of the far-flung listeners that we have. Let me know where you are. Where where does this signal reach? I mean, I know where it reaches, but where where are people actually listening? So hit us up on Twitter and let us know. And if you have any questions, too, you can tweet us, and we might uh, see if we can't answer them during the broadcast. So here's Marcus Stroman for the top of the second through 18 pitches in the first. And his first pitch to David Freeze is a called strike, 0-1. Stroman was ahead of every battery face in the first inning, and each time they wound up working back to a full count. Jared Saltamaki gets good and low behind the plate there to take that breaking ball, and it misses low. Ball one, one, one. They're one knee on the ground there. Here's a one, one pitch. Down and away. Ball two, two and one. Setting the Blue Jays' defense for you. Stroman on the mound pitching to Saltamaki. Justin Smoke is at first with Darwin Barney at second. Ryan Goins at short. Gregorio Petit at third, and there's a ground ball back over the mound. Stroman reaches up, makes a play throw to first. Looking like a wide receiver going back on a ball like that. Very nice play by Marcus Stroman for the first out. Yeah, showing off that athleticism there by Marcus Stroman. Really nice work by him to get off the mound and stay with the ball as it goes back toward second base, where Darwin Barney might have had a shot, but that was probably the Blue Jays' best chance to get the out. Barney charging in, and you're right, probably makes a play coming forward. He's an excellent defensive second baseman. But anything the pitcher can get, the pitcher gets. And that was a great play by Stroman, snow coning it at the top of his leap. Now as John Jaso stands in, dreadlocks are flowing. Stroman taps himself on the stomach and gets going and delivers a first pitch. It swung on and missed 0-1. Sometimes in a regular season game, after a play like that, you'll see the catcher go out. Give a pitcher a chance to get a breather. 0-1 to Jaso, tap foul. I like a lot of what John Jaso does, not just with the hair and with the name, because it's awesome. That you can call him John Jaso Jingleheimer Schmidt. But this is a guy with tremendous plate discipline. This is a guy who's not afraid to hit deep in counts. A guy who gets on base a ton. Wacky batting stance, swings and misses, and Stroman strikes him out on three pitches. Yeah, that's really the ideal matchup for Jaso against a right-handed pitcher. He's able to get a good look at the ball, and he's an on-base machine every single year. Last year, again, up over 350. So a very useful piece for a Pirates team that can't necessarily afford to go out there and spend huge money on free agents. Yeah, and it's interesting to see where he's going to fit in this year because your outfield is full which means that Josh Bell, if he's going to play, is going to play first. Here's Chris Bostic, who takes the pitch down for ball one. You've got Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, Gregory Polanco in your outfield. And Jason played first base for them every day last year until Bell came up around August. 1-0 is in there for a strike, 1-1. But Bell played a little bit of the outfield. Jason, I don't know if you can put him in the outfield. He certainly can't catch anymore because of the concussion issues. One, two, one, one pitch is low, ball two. I mean, maybe he's their Matt Joyce next year or yeah, this year. Right, someone who can go and, and play a variety of different positions, fill in an outfield, first base, and you have the DH for games in the American League. Two, one pitch, there for a strike, two and two. And maybe on a day that he plays first, he kicks Bell out to the outfield or something. I don't know, uh, Josh Bell, one of the premier young power prospects in the game. I don't know if they're going to want him running around out there. Two and two on Bostic. Swing and a miss. It gets into the dirt. Sasalta Lamacchia will come up with it and throw to first to complete the out. 
And Marcus Stroman has a 1-2-3 second inning looking awfully good. We head to the bottom of the second. Nothing, nothing. Blue Jays and Pirates. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Wow, look at the snow flurry. You know, we better take my Subaru. No arguing. Against Pirates righty Chad Cool. First pitch to Smoke is swung on and fouled away. 0-1. Whenever you talk about Justin Smoke, it, it, there, it seems so, there are such poles in the way people think of him. The fans, for the most part, are not big fans of Justin, it seems like to me, as he takes that pitch inside one and one But the, the high foreheads, the number crunchers, love him. Love him and think there's a lot more in there. The 1-1 pitch, inside, ball two, two and one. What do you think about Justin Smoke? You know what? I, I'm not holding my breath, to be honest, that he's going to become that prospect that everyone thought he could become. But I think that in his present form, he still has some value. There's a swing, a little tapper out to the uh, right side. The shortstop, and Gope comes over and makes a play with a shift on. Nice play. And he throws to the even better dreadlock, Jaso, for the out. Both of them got the flow going, one down. Yeah, Jason's flow, tough to beat. It covers his name on the back of his jersey. That is that is a high standard for all other all other players on this field. That is absolutely true. Nice play by Ngope coming across the middle. Now here's Daryl Siciliani. The older a guy gets, the less likely it is that he'll fulfill that stardom that was expected of him. Siciliani's first pitch is golf to left field. Coming over is Polanco chasing, making a great catch into foul territory, and he runs all the way almost to the Pirates clubhouse, which is under the stands in third base. His momentum took him awful far. There's two down. It's perfect. There's no fence right there. He can just keep going. Doesn't have to worry about crashing. Really nice play, though, and that goes back to what we were talking about with Polanco is a player who can contribute in a lot of different ways, and right there we saw that defensive value that he can bring. He could have gotten on the bus. Oh, yeah. He almost almost made it to the bus. He ran past the bullpens and uh, into where the half field is. Speaking of prospects, Anthony Alford takes strike one here. I don't want to jump from player to player too much but you know they, they do kind of speed through things here sometimes in spring training the 0-1 pitch is whacked to left center field that's hit a ton but down towards the track it dies and Starling Marte is able to make the catch the wind knocked that thing down a great piece by Anthony Alford but it's another 1-2-3 inning for your Toronto Blue Jays we go to the third Nothing, nothing. Jays aboard Yankees lead the Orioles one to nothing in the bottom of the second. It's Boston one, St. Louis nothing in the top of the second inning. Phillies and Rays are tied one one. That one is in the bottom of the second inning. Grapefruit League action all across the state of Florida. Roberto Asuna's first pitch to Eric Weiss is a strike. You want, a, you want a little nugget here, a little trivia tidbit for you? What huh? have you got? I, got? I got a good one. It comes from the Blue Jays video coordinator, Captain Video. There's a swing and a miss, and the back goes flying into the stands, but it lands in the concourse level, the, the walking path between the lower deck and the upper deck, so nobody hurt. Man, that was dangerous. That went a long, long way. 0-2 on Eric Weiss. That was close. That's scary. But again, it just flew over those first seven rows of seats and landed in the path in between. A fan grabbed it. And he's got a souvenir. It's 0-2 on Weiss. Asuna pitching from the stretch is high. Here's what Captain Video told me before the game. Eric Weiss, also the real name of Harry Houdini. Wow, and here he is playing baseball. And here he is. There's a magic trick for you. <laughs> yeah. Playing in a great league game 100 years after he died. 1-2 two pitch is inside. Ball 2-2-2. Two, two and two. Nothing, nothing. Blue Jays and Pirates. Marcus Stroman, 6-up, six 6 down in his outing. It's three strikeouts, a couple of ground balls, and one hard line drive that was hauled in by Justin Smoke. 2-2 pitch, strike three call. 
Weiss goes down looking, and really, Roberto Osuna against a minor leaguer is far from a fair match. Right, even though he's probably younger than a lot of players still in the minor leagues, but Osuna has shown the last couple of years just how effective he can be on the mound for the Blue Jays. And John Gibbons saying before the game today that he can actually see you know, Osuna building on the production that he's been able to deliver for the Blue Jays these past couple of seasons. And when you're only 22, it's hard to imagine that you've reached your ceiling. So many guys his age, like you said, still plugging away in the minors. Jacob Stallings, the catcher, takes the first pitch up from Asuna, and he did that little sort of hesitation. Second time we've seen that this inning. Trying to add little wrinkles to mess up batter's timing. You kind of wonder if they even have to because he's been so productive. The 1 0 hit hard into left field. That's a base hit. Line drive past the diving Ryan Goins, and we have our first base runner of the game. Very well pitched game so far. Stroman, very nice clean innings for him. Couple of scoreless innings to start his spring off, and Asuna following up with a strikeout and a base hit allowed. Here's Gift and Gope. Pirate shortstop and the nine hitter. And Gope is spelled N G O E P E. We've seen him now for a few springs. Pirates love to give this guy a look, and he hits the first pitch on the ground under the glove of Justin Smoke and into right field. A base hit. Alfred is on it quickly. And stopping at second is stalling. Back to back singles for the Pirates here with one out in the third. And as much as it's fun to watch the pitchers and watch the hitters, watching Alfred play defense will, will be worthwhile this spring as well. Already hit one ball very hard today to end the Blue Jays' half of the second inning. And for a moment before it was caught, I thought that it might end up going for extra bases. Yeah, uh, we both thought he crushed that ball. The wind, the flags are silent right now, but uh, must have knocked it down or something. He had a ton of topspin on it or something that knocked that ball down. It looked like it was going a long way. Here's a leadoff man, Yuri Perez, former Houston Astro. Swings and breaks his bat, hits it to second. Barney, Goins, smoke, double play. So Roberto Asuna gives up a couple of one-out singles and then gets a one-pitch DP ball to get out of it. The Pirates get the first two hits of the ball game, but don't score. And we go to the bottom. .ca. This is Toronto Blue Jays baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. From Pouch Cove, Newfoundland to Vancouver, B.C., welcome to Blue Jays baseball here live from Dunedin. Mike Wilner and Ben Nicholson-Smith here with you. It's nothing, nothing. Jason Pirates in the bottom of the third. And Wade LeBlanc, the lefty, is on to pitch for Pittsburgh. Made his way to the Pirates via Seattle after pitching for the Buffalo Bisons and having an outstanding half season for the Bisons last year. He was an International League All-Star. The Blue Jays traded him to the Mariners because they just didn't have any room for him. And now here he is trying to win a job with the Pirates. Blue Jays still looking for their first base runner of the day. Right. And it'll be tough against LeBlanc. He actually had a pretty good major league season, too, posting a 377 ERA, 62 innings. So he wasn't up at the big league level for all that much time. But when he was, the results were pretty decent. Yeah, left a lot of people scratching their heads, but why didn't the Jays keep him? His first pitch down and into Darwin Barney. The truth of the matter is there's no room in the rotation for the Blue Jays. There's, you're not going to put Wade LeBlanc in your big league bullpen, especially he's a guy who in his career has gotten righties out a lot better than lefties as Barney fouls that ball off. And going into last season, lefties at 300 against him with an OPS over 900 in the major league. So, you know, he's, he's not your lefty masher. Um, and in order to be fair to him, why not give him an opportunity to play for someone in the big leagues? Exactly, and that's part of the reason why it can be hard for teams like the Blue Jays to actually attract those depth starters. Pitch to Barney is whacked foul right in front of the feet of third base coach Luis Rivera. Because if, if you have a very strong starting five, as the Blue Jays do, then you realize that. If you're a number six type, you're trying to reestablish yourself, you don't necessarily want to sign in Toronto. Maybe if you're a slugger, you do, but probably not if you're a starting pitcher trying to establish value. Absolutely true, and that's this, the other side that you have to look at when you're looking at the free agent market. The one-two pitch, swung on and missed, gets away from Stallings, but he picks it up and throws to first. And that's the first out here in the third. Wade LeBlanc 
whiffs Darwin Barney, and now it's Ryan Goins. And we'll remind you that there's no better place to watch the action this season than at Rogers Center. Six, 12, and 20 game packs are available. Just call 416-341-1234 or go to bluejays.com slash game packs. Had a caller on Blue Jays talk yesterday to that uh, end, Ben, about you know how attractive a situation has to be for a free agent, asking about Matt Wieters. First pitch to Goins is away for ball one. It's nothing, nothing. Jays and Pirates. Bottom of the third. Nobody on and one out. And the caller said, well, why didn't the Blue Jays go after Matt Wieters? It's a perfect fit. He could have been the backup catcher, played a few games at first base. How great would that have been for the Blue Jays? 1-0 is there for a strike, 1-1. And the answer is, yeah, that would have been great for the Blue Jays. But why would Matt Wieters want to do that? Exactly, and that's why front offices will check in with just about every player. It's really, that's why you see all those rumors, and it, it leads to a fun discussion in the off season. but more often than not, those discussions end because one side or the other might just say, you know what, it's not a great fit for us. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on and missed. Goins fooled on a changeup from Wade LeBlanc at 72 miles an hour. It's 1-2. and two. And that's why when you look out at the... the expanse of free agents you could say oh this guy would be a great fit this guy would be great this guy would be terrific but you have to think what's he thinking matt weeders is a starting catcher he doesn't want to take a job to be russell martin's backup and play some first that pitch is inside two and two and while he had to wait he wound up getting a starting job right and it can work the other way where the blue jays now have established themselves as a winning team as a team that has a huge base of fan support russell martin really before the blue jays started winning Wanted to come to Toronto, and that helped. 2-2 pitch hit on the ground to second. Bostic is there. He'll throw it on to first. And that's two down. Certainly it's not the case with every free agent, and the Blue Jays run into that as every team does in the course of the offseason. This, this year you think of Dexter Fowler, who is someone who was very much on their radar, didn't end up happening for Toronto. To me, that was more of a value assessment where Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins had a, a limit that they were going to go to for Dexter Fowler. And while they were the finalists with St. Louis, the Cardinals were willing to give more years and more money. Generally, that works. It's a good, it's a good way to go. It doesn't yeah. always work. didn't work with Edwin, but it generally works. Here's Gregorio Petit takes a first pitch strike. This is the first time we've seen him. This spring, his first game action, Petit signing as a minor league free agent. He's had big league time with the Astros and with the Yankees. Been a lefty crusher in some of his past short stints in the majors. He takes that pitch low for ball one. He can play anywhere on the infield. And he's just another guy to have in Buffalo who is insurance with big league experience. 1-1, one, one, hit hard on the ground to third. David Fries has it. Former World Series MVP throws it on to first. And the inning is over. Three up, three down go the Blue Jays in the third. They are nine up and nine down for the game. But the Buccos haven't scored either. It's nothing, nothing. Toronto and Pittsburgh as we head to the fourth. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Break. Changes for the Blue Jays as we move to the fourth inning. It's nothing, nothing. Jays and Pirates. Aaron Loop is on the pitch, taking over for Roberto Asuna. And Juan Graterol has come into the game behind the plate. So Jared Saltalamacchia played yesterday, so he only gets three innings today. Goes 0 for 1 with the strikeout. And then we saw Jose Bautista head down to the clubhouse. He's the DH, so he could still come back and take another at-bat in the bottom of the fourth. Don't know if he will, though. We'll keep an eye on that. Right. It's not like Rogers Center where they have the tunnels and they can easily escape and go if they need to check on something. Starling Marte stands in, shows bunt against Aaron Loop and takes a first pitch. Low for a ball. 1-0. and and it's weird because the clubhouse is open during the game for the media, though generally not until the starting pitcher is, is ready to talk. 1-0 pitch again bunted at and again pulls the bat back and takes ball 2, 2-0. Two oh. So there have been occasions, not anymore now that we're doing all these games on the web, but there have been occasions where I've been in the clubhouse during the game and a guy who's still in the game comes in, and I don't know that he's still in the game. 2-0 pitch is swung on and fouled away 2-1. So I've said, you know, say hi or whatever, or you want to talk to me, I'm still playing. 
I'm in well, right field right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't realize. So here's Aaron Loop. Aaron Loop is now the number two lefty on the depth chart, probably behind J.P. Howell. 2-1 pitch is down, ball three. Coming off a pretty disappointing couple of seasons for the Blue Jays, and he's really in tough to make this team, I think. Yeah, I agree. When you look at just the fact that he has options, and he's second on the depth chart, J.P. Howell, that top lefty. 3-1 pitch hit on the ground to third. Petit dies, but it's past him and down to left field. It'll be cut off by Siciliani before it gets to the wall, but into second with a leadoff double is Starling Marte. So Loop will have an uphill battle this year, and I think he'll get his chances in the course of the season. Just talking to Pete Walker the other day about how many arms it takes to get through a long season. Aaron Loop figures to be one of those arms at various points in this season. We've seen it happen really each of the last few years, but the last couple, like you said, Mike, have been pretty disappointing for Loop. And you wonder, too, if he's not going to get pushed from the other side by Matt Dermody. Absolutely. You know, there's a guy who pitched at four levels last year, finished up in the major leagues, and uh, a short stint, but um, he struck out David Ortiz. Um, so that kind of showed something. He was a very effective lefty on the way up. So Loop now, instead of being the guy behind Brett Cecil is the guy behind J.P. Howell and maybe even with Matt Dermody as he misses ball one outside, 1-0. One oh. Nothing, nothing, Blue Jays and Pirates, but Pittsburgh's got a runner at second here leading off this fourth inning. Pitch to Polanco is outside, ball two. And what's hurt Aaron Loop is strike zone command because when he had his great couple of years with the Blue Jays, he wasn't walking anybody. And those numbers have shot up recently. Not to mention the hit batters, yep. which seemed to be an issue for him, especially against same-handed batters. You want him in there to get lefties out, and this is a lefty in Polanco, and he misses low with that pitch, 3-0. and And again, you can't pour too much on one spring outing, but what you want to see out of Aaron Loop is him being aggressive against left-handed hitters and making them look silly with that sidearm delivery. And he misses inside and walks his lefty, Polanco, on four pitches. And even though Polanco reaching base right here, a couple men on for the Pirates, that can't have been a comfortable at-bat. You just look at that arm slot. We're so used to it. We've seen it year in and year out now. His teammates are used to it. But if you're an opposing hitter, especially someone from the National League, it's got to be a very uncomfortable look. And one would think that that's a great strength of Aaron Loops, is making those hitters uncomfortable. But you have to take advantage of it by throwing strikes. Here's David Freeze, right-handed hitter, former St. Louis Cardinal, been with the Pirates for a couple of years now. And he takes a first-pitch strike, 0-1. It's nothing, nothing. Blue Jays and Pirates were in the top of the fourth inning. The Pirates have all three hits that there have been in this game. Two singles off Roberto Asuna in the third. And the leadoff double here by Starling Marte in the fourth. Marcus Stroman threw two perfect innings. 0-1 pitch is fouled away over the head of the on-deck hitter, John Jaso. And after walking the lefty on four pitches, loops ahead of the righty 0-2. There you go. Can't make sense of baseball even in spring training. That's why they call it baseball. Jason Pirates at it again tomorrow with Lucas Harrell on the mound for the Blue Jays. Threw a perfect inning on Saturday in the opener. There's a swing and a miss, and Freeze goes down on three pitches. Tomorrow it's Lucas Harrell against Ivan Nova. And we'll have that game for you all across the World Wide Web at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There will be no TV and no radio for that game. So we will be the only way you can get it. And it will be silly for me to tell people who are listening right now to get the MLB.com audio package because you already have it. But tell all your friends. John Jaso, first pitch swinging, fouls it straight back 0-1. Another left-on-left -left opportunity for Aaron Loop here. With runners at first and second and now one out in the top of the fourth. After Lucas Harrell pitches tomorrow, the Blue Jays will get into their regular rotation. 
and the five starters who are expected to be on the major league team will start starting. There go the runners. It's a strike call. Throw it down to third late. A double steal executed by the Pirates. A great jump off of Aaron Loop by Starling Marte. And Salta Lamacchia really had no chance there. Yeah, it was a really nice bit of aggressive base running by the Pirates. And the throw was just a little bit too far to the second base side at third. So Petit really didn't have the chance to make a good tag on the throw by Gratterall. But it's 0-2 on Jay, so a little more important here. And the pitch is swung on, hit in the air, center field deep. Pilar going back, still going back. Siciliani coming over. He'll make the catch in deep left field. Both runners tag into score is Marte to third Polanco. And the Pirates take a 1-0 lead on a sack fly by John Jason. It was a well-hit ball into the gap there. And we saw both outfielders really have to move quickly to converge and try to make that play. Pilar moving very quickly. For a while, I thought he might be the one to make the catch, but it turned out to be Siciliani. And again, when something like that happens, we take a look at the wind, but a left-handed batter hitting the ball the other way, it's always going to slice towards left field. Pilar just has so much range, as we know so well. He almost got over to get that in left center. Left, left center. And the first pitch strike from Aaron Loop to Chris Bostic. So Loop gives up the leadoff double, then the walk, strikes out Freeze, and gets a fly ball from John Jaso, but allowing the double steal allows Pittsburgh to score a run. There's a swing and a foul off. 0 oh 2. One nothing Pirates. The Blue Jays looking for their first win of the spring. They lost Saturday at Disney World to the Atlanta Braves, 7 to 3. And a couple of losses yesterday. 0-2 is high. Ball 1, 1-2. One Actually lost 7-4 to four to the Braves in that game. Yesterday here, they lost 10-3 to the Phillies. And in Tampa, 7-2 to the Yankees. Here there's a runner at third with two outs. Jays down 1-0. The 1-2 pitch is down and in. Ball 2, 2-2. Two two. To Loop's credit, in the last few batters, he has been throwing more strikes and attacking the zone a little bit more than he was early this inning. Loop comes set. 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on, hit foul. Wide of third. And Bostic stays alive. Bostic, one of the kids that the Pirates have brought over. 24-year-old out of Rochester, New York. And he takes a 2-2 pitch. Up and away, the fans wanted it. Split time last year between AA Harrisburg and AAA Syracuse. Three-two pitches inside, ball four. Second walk of the inning for Aaron Loop. And now there are Pirates on the corners for Houdini. Another left-handed hitter here, so at least Loop is getting a lot of looks against those same-handed batters. You have to think that if he is on the Blue Jays roster at some point this year, he's probably going to be used more often than not in those situations. I don't think the Blue Jays want him facing a lot of right-handed batters. Absolutely. He's in there with a the strike on the first pitch to Eric Weiss. This is the third lefty he's faced in the inning. He walked Gregory Polanco on four pitches and gave up a sack fly to deep left center to John Jaso. Of the three righties, there's been a walk, a double, and a strikeout. There's another strike poured in against Weiss 0 2. And this is what we want to see, right? Attacking the lefties, not messing around, just go get them. Runners on the corners, two out, top of the fourth, 1 0 Blue Jays, trailing the Pittsburgh Pirates. The 0 2. Strike three call. Weiss goes down looking for the second time today. And the inning is over, but not before the Pirates get a run on a hit, a double steal, and a sacrifice fly. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Blue Jays trailing Pittsburgh. One zip. 
You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network and MLB.com slash cars today. Kevin Pilar stands in to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning, and he takes a first pitch ball from Wade LeBlanc. Jose Bautista is out on deck, so he came back from the clubhouse. He's the DH. He's allowed to go do whatever he wants while the Jays are on defense. 1 0 pitches in there for a strike, 1 1. And they do that during the regular season, too. We just can't see it. Absolutely. Checking video, taking a few swings on a tee, potentially. Having a granola bar. If you're Pablo Sandoval, maybe liking some Instagram photos. <laughs> he has that ball, too. He's the only one to do that, oh, as yeah. far as we know. That's right. As far as we know. 2-1 and one on Kevin Pillar. The Blue Jays 9 up, 9 down to start the game. First 6 against Chad Cool. The next 3 against LeBlanc. Pillar swings and fouls a pitch off. He went way up and away to get that one. That was ball 3, and now it's 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, and Pillar's plate discipline definitely worth watching. I was talking to him the other day about his approach for the season. He is really focused on trying to stay healthy, stay on the field, because he he's aware. 2-2 two, two is inside. Aware of how much of a difference that can make, having seen Russell Martin, Josh Donaldson grind through the entire season, and, and he's done that too, to his credit. Only 39 players have played in more games than Pilar in the last two seasons. 3-2 pitch at hard and foul behind Luis Rivera down the third base side. Now ben, you wrote a, a feature on Kevin Pilar, a story that's up on sportsnet.ca talking about just that. And it's interesting. You said stay on the field, stay healthy. He's done a great job of staying on the field. He hasn't done a great job of staying healthy. Yeah, exactly. And that's where that difference can exist and make a big difference. Full count pitch to Pilar. Low ball four. Kevin Pilar draws a walk to lead off this bottom of the fourth inning, and he is the first Blue Jays base runner of the afternoon. Yeah, Pilar worked with the Blue Jays' high-performance team in the offseason, trying to build functional strength, and that's what he described to me as essentially ways to have strength that can impact a game. So not just strength for the for the sake of having you know, a nice photo on Instagram or, or you know to, to be able to lift a certain amount of weight, but actually having strength that can help him in games. So he was working on that, had thumb surgery, and now he's feeling good. First pitch to Jose Bautista, off-speed delivery, and Jose sitting dead red on a fastball takes it for strike one. And Pilar played 159 games in 2015, but played through a broken finger in the month of August. Last year, spent some time on the DL, still played 146 games, which is amazing because the DL is 15 days. The 0-1 pitch is outside, 101 to Bautista, but last year he played through that thumb injury that required off-season surgery. So... Uh, hopefully, the addition of the functional strength, the extra functional strength will help. But it also helps it right now. You see he's wearing that oven mitt on his left hand. Wears a shin guard at the plate now when he didn't used to do that. Takes his lead. He's measuring up LeBlanc. Tough to run against the lefty. And a throw over to first to check on Kevin. And it's not really his style to ease up. I mean, we've seen that enough times in the course of this last few years to know that he's a player who goes all out but I think at this point of spring training especially he's aware of the fact that he's got to wait he's got to be patient to to be as productive as possible all year. Bautista fouls that pitch off it's one and two he told me on Saturday we had him on in the pregame uh, that he is going to stay on his feet a lot more during spring training but once the season starts he will go back to playing the outfield with, as he said, no regard for his health. <laughs> Pilar takes the lead off first. He led off this bottom of the fourth with a walk. Jose Bautista stands in, and the 1-2 is away. Count is even, 2-2. Two and two. one nothing. Pirates over the Blue Jays. The Pirates have out-hit the Jays 3-0. There have not been any errors committed. And the wind's starting to pick up out to left field a little bit, so Bautista likes that. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed. LeBlanc strikes him out with the high cheese at 85. Yeah, that's not a pitch that Jose Bautista would want to be swinging at in the regular season. Or if he does, he'd want to be hitting it over the left field wall. But a little bit outside of his zone. We're used to seeing Bautista so disciplined, so set in what he expects out of himself as far as laying off pitches outside the strike zone. That is a pitch that Jose Bautista usually either takes or hits 480 feet. 
Now here's Juan Gratterall, catcher, came over on waivers, a throw over to first, first to check on Pilar. Gratterall took over for Jared Saltalamacchia back in the third inning. You know that LeBlanc is not going to gear up and throw it in the mid-90s. So you're sitting and you're sitting and you're sitting. And there's a quick throw over to first. LeBlanc has a great move. And he finally showed it there. And Bautista, I think, more disappointed that he didn't hit that into next week than that he just missed it completely. Gratterall swings and fouls it off. So it's 0-1 on him. And that's how you have Kevin Pillar being the one to draw the walk and Jose Batista being the one to expand the strike zone and swing at a pitch he shouldn't. Those are the kind of pitches that make a power hitter's eyes almost jump right out of his head. You think you can absolutely destroy this one. And second game action in spring training, so the timing's not down yet. But I would wager that in three weeks, that ball does not come back. 0-1 pitch, and Gratterall takes it away. Ball 1-1-1, one, one and, one. and Wade LeBlanc has really slowed things down here in the bottom of the fourth inning with Kevin Pilar on first base trying to keep him there. And that's, again, one of the reasons that he holds runners so well. He varies his timing. He stares them down. And he's got a really good snap throw over. Pilar takes a healthy lead and a throw over to first. That was not the A move. Pilar easily back safely. I don't think the fans appreciate Wade LeBlanc's pickoff move. just want you all to know out there that the reason this is happening was because after the third inning, Ben Nicholson-Smith said, this game's really moving, isn't it? There's a swing and a foul back, one and two. If I had that kind of power, <laughs> you think I'd be using it on the pace of game? I use it on Mark Trumbo home runs. I don't know what you would use yours on. That's, that, was my, that was something else. Justin Smoke stands on deck. Bottom of the fourth, one nothing Blue Jays. Keep thinking that trailing the Pittsburgh Pirates that's how you get out of that there's a little broadcast trick for you Ben you're just doing your first few radio games if you screw up like that you just find a way out one nothing Blue Jays trailing the Pittsburgh Pirates Pilar leaning now towards second not going the pitch is grounded up the middle but right to Boston flip to Ngope for one and throw it to Jaso for a double play about as textbook as it gets especially with Juan Gratterall and his catcher speed coming down the line. So the Blue Jays get their first base runner, but it's erased. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Pittsburgh on top, one to nothing. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. New Scott's Long Response 9 Sportsnet Radio Network. This fifth inning brought to you by your Toronto Ford dealers. Tough, capable, and a deal all in one. The great year-end deals are back, plus an extra $1,000 in year-end bonus cash details at findyourford.ca. Mike Wilner, Ben Nicholson-Smith here with you. Tom Young here with us, helping us get on the air here in Dunedin. And back in Toronto, Derek Brandeo handling the duties. It is one nothing. The Pirates over the Blue Jays, and Ryan Tapera comes on. Taking over for Aaron Loop, who gave up a run on a hit and a couple of walks in the fourth inning after two perfect innings from Marcus Stroman and one shutout frame from Roberto Asuna. Tapera will face the 8-9-1 hitters in the Pirates lineup, starting with a catcher, Jacob Stallings. And Stallings was the first base runner of this game. He singled hard to left off of Roberto Asuna with one out in the third. Tapera's first pitch is a fastball high at 94 miles an hour for ball one. Ben, it's an interesting grouping in the bullpen that the Blue Jays have to sift through at the bottom, assuming that five or even maybe six spots are already set. The pitch is low, ball two, two and oh. You've got Roberto Asuna, you've got Jason Grilly, Joe Biagini who we know could start, could, we've, there have been, there's been talk about him starting in Buffalo, but yesterday John Gibbons told us he's on the team, he's in the bullpen. J.P. Howell and Joe Smith, that's five. And Matt Latos may well be six. 
2 0 pitch is there for a strike, 2 and 1. That leaves only, well, hopefully one spot because the eight man bullpen, I think, is a, a blight on the game. But you never know. With the off days early, they could take eight uh, in the pen. Um, but there's, there's a lot of guys competing for those last spot or two. The 2 1 pitch right back up the middle of base head. Hit the mound just in front of Tapera and bounced into center field. So Stallings is two for two. Yeah, there really is a lot of competition in the bullpen, and it looks like two spots. I can't see them going to an eight-man bullpen because they already have four players penciled in on that bench. So to me, that says seven. And like you said, five of those spots are spoken for. So right now, there's a, a pretty good competition with guys like Tapera. You have Chris Smith, of course. We saw Loop. Then you have out-of-options guys. You have Bo Schultz, Mike Bolsinger. Matt Latos, of course, in that mix as well. Gifton Gope, the South African, stands in now and takes the ball low. 1-0. And then you've got the Rule 5 or Glenn Sparkman. Schultz and Mike Bolsinger are out of options. Zapero, we didn't even mention. Danny Barnes. one pitch pitches foul back. Now, there is a danger in getting too hung up on the April 3rd roster, right? Because it is so fluid and it can change all the time. And, and you mentioned earlier, they're going to need a lot of pitchers out of this bullpen. So you almost automatically think Tapera and Barnes have options. They can't make this team. Chris Smith, too. Yeah. Even though he seems to be the early camp darling. 1-1 one, one pitch hit on the ground to third. Petit has it. Throw to second one over to first. Scooped out by Smoke. A double play. And Gope runs out from under his helmet trying to beat that thing out. A nice scoop by Smoke, and it's an around-the-horn DP. Two down here in the fifth. Nice bit of defense there by the Jays. And backing up to Para, who, you know, should be another one of those names who helps the Jays out at some point. Looking back at his season last year, it's almost easy to forget, but he had a 2.95 ERA, only made 20 appearances, but he was pretty solid. And we've seen that whenever, whenever he's been up at the big league level, he's been a pretty usable, useful reliever. Not the kind of guy who's going to necessarily shut people down for extended stretches, but still has value. Here's the leadoff man, Yuri Perez. He takes a first pitch strike and has value, and especially as like a sixth reliever, right? This is a guy, Tapera, who is so much better than almost everybody at the bottom of every other bullpen. There was a 96-mile-an-hour fastball right there. Here's the 0-1. He bunts through it, 0-2. And, and that's where you can see Tapera taking another step forward and potentially pitching better than what we've seen, which has been very respectable, but you do wonder. And I don't think that the Jays are banking on that by any stretch, but... With those last two spots, what they can do is look for a little bit of upside. They can play around with the hot hand. I don't think that they're going to be beholden to taking a Bo Schultz just because he's out of options, for example. They're going to try to balance the organizational depth out with having that best team on the first day of the season. And now Juan Gratterall is going to come out and talk to Ryan Tapera. And the season opens in Baltimore with a two-game series over three days. So you have opening day, then an off day. Then the Blue Jays play five games in a row. They finish the series in Baltimore, go to Tampa for four, then another off day. So it's not like you, you can wait two weeks till you need a fifth starter. They need one on the first Sunday of the season. The 0-2 pitch hit on the ground into left field. That's a base hit. Perez stayed on that off-speed delivery and snuck it through the hole. That's a, but that's another consideration. They don't need a fifth starter until April 9th, so maybe for the first three games, Francisco Liriano can work out of the bullpen, save a guy off the roster. A pinch hitter here for Starling Marte. It's Danny Ortiz. Where's number 69, and so does the catcher, Juan Gratterall. Runner first two out. Top of the fifth, one nothing Pirates. First pitch to Ortiz is down and in. We saw the Blue Jays do that last year when Marco Estrada was dealing with a little bit of a, a back issue. Started with four starters, and that allowed them to go north with an eight-man bullpen, and that was essentially a 12-man staff, which, like you said, and I would agree with this, you don't want to go more than that. No, you really, as, as little as possible, you want to have eight guys in the bullpen. 
Run, oh, pitch, runner goes, and it's fouled off at the plate. So Clint Hurdle playing a little bit of hit and run. Not a great pitch to swing at. You would assume Ortiz only did it because he had to. And the runner will have to come back. Kind of fun seeing some small ball in spring training. I don't consider hit and run to be small ball. Okay. I consider, and, and I know there's a wide spectrum of definitions for that. I love the hit and run. I'm not a fan of the small ball. Healthy lead for Perez, and there's a ground ball into left field. Another base hit. On it quickly is Siciliani, so Perez has to hold at second. But the Blue Jays left a big hole there, the left side of the infield, and Ortiz found it. That's the third hit of the inning off of Ryan Tapera. All of them on the ground. And now he's going to have to deal with Gregory Polanco with two on and two out. Tough matchup here for the right-handed throwing to Para, but the Blue Jays have liked to Para in the past against left-handed batters. A little bit more than your traditional right-handed reliever. I believe he has a cutter that allows him to confuse left-handed hitters such as Gregory Polanco. Yeah, that's the great equalizer, the cutter for the righty against left-handed batters. Looks like a fastball and then just dives in on you. And that one dove in a lot. And Polanco bicycles out of the batter's box to get out of the way. One ball and no strikes. Perez is at second. Ortiz is at first. Two out here in the top of the fifth. The Blue Jays trailing the Pirates one nothing. They've been out hit 6 to nothing at this point. One-zero pitch is low ball two. The Blue Jays are shifting Polanco. Shortstop Ryan Goins is still on the shortstop side of second, but only by a few steps. So just like there was for Danny Ortiz, there's a big hole on the left side of the infield. Tapera comes set, checks the runner at second. The 2-0 pitch, there for a strike, 2-1. and one. Another off-speed delivery from Tapera. We've seen the 96s, but we've also seen the 87s. Here comes the 2-1. It's swung on and missed. Big rip by Polanco. Sitting fastball, didn't get it. It's amazing how 88 can look slow, but he's been throwing 96, and all of a sudden the, the change in speed is enough to throw off the hitter's timing and ours too. So now Tapera is a strike away from getting out of this, and here comes the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Comes back with the off speed again, doubles up on him and gets Polanco to swing through it. So Tapera gives up three singles in the top of the fifth, but nary a run thanks to a double play ball. It's all about sequence. Looking for their first hit of the game. And some changes for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We have a new pitcher, Nick Kingham, is in to pitch. The new third baseman is Eric Wood. Taking over for David Freeze. And Barrett Barnes is your new left fielder. Justin Smoke leads off and smacks a first pitch up the middle. That's a base hit. Gifton Gope, the shortstop, was playing on the shift and was diving to his right for a ball that went over second base. But Smoke's got the Blue Jays' first hit of the day, and he will leave Rowdy Telez coming into pinch run. A rare pinch running appearance for Rowdy Telez. Not necessarily noted for his speed, but it's going to be a lot of fun to watch Telez this spring. I think that based on everything that he did last year at Double A, hitting, I think it was 22 home runs, OPS over 900, he really impressed. And then he worked very hard this offseason to build up toward what should be a big year for him. Daryl Siciliani takes a first pitch strike from Kingham. He's a guy that everyone's talking about, that John Gibbons told us yesterday is the closest of all the prospects to the major leagues, which 
makes sense. He was the only one to spend a whole year at double-A and dominate. Takes his lead. The 0-1 to Siciliani is swung on, hit in the air to right field. Deep but not deep enough. Back goes Yuri Perez, and on the track, makes the catch. Back to first goes Telez. That's the first out here in the fifth. I thought that was interesting that John Gibbons singled out Rowdy Telez and said that. It wasn't as though someone said, hey, who's the closest to the major leagues? He noted that, and like you said, not a particularly controversial statement given the success that Telez had, but he's someone who's worth watching because... Really, at this point, he's an injury away, potentially, from being someone that the Jays would take a long look at. Anytime you're at AAA and on your way up, you are a heartbeat away for sure. Here's Anthony Alford, and he swings at the first pitch and pops it up foul. That's going to get out of play. 0-1. What do you think the chances are that Anthony Alford might start the season as high as AA? Tough that... year in A-ball last year. Right. At the same time, though, he's someone who's probably more advanced than the numbers might reflect. Well, I meant tough, yeah, injury-wise as well as the numbers. Is he takes strike two, zero and two, had the concussion, had the knee thing, but he was repeating a ball. I just, um, I, you know, I don't know yet how comfortable the Mark Shapiro, Ross Atkins regime is with pushing guys before they've had success at one level to the next one. O two is in the dirt block nicely by Stallings to keep Rowdy at first. Right, and maybe. To some extent, these players will dictate their own development. I don't think we're going to see the Blue Jays rush him up to double-A AA or triple-A unless the performance dictates that. And so that performance could be here in spring training. Maybe it's in the opening weeks at Dunedin where it's great weather, good chance to start down here, and then work his way up. But he's someone who could rise quickly. One, two pitches fouled away. And that's something that needs to be considered as well. It's way better to start a guy in Dunedin than in New Hampshire, just weather-wise in April, so you get your games in. Exactly. It's a great place to be for baseball virtually all year round. So it's a it's a good spot. You know you're not going to get rained out. You know you're going to be able to warm up. Telez goes. The pitch is down and away. Alfred swings, and Rowdy has himself a stolen base. Rowdy Telez living up to the number one on his back. Steal second base as Alfred strikes out. Well, there's a new element to the game. We've seen that Telez's conditioning has improved a lot, and we've seen his defense in the eyes of a lot of the people with the Blue Jays has improved. But to this point in his professional career, he hasn't stolen a lot of bases. Just 13. He's been caught seven times. Last year, he was four for seven, so not something that he's done a lot of as a professional. As Darwin Barney steps in, we check on the out-of-town scoreboard. Yankees leading the Orioles 1-0 in the bottom of the fifth in Sarasota. Barney takes strike one. Cardinals three and the Red Sox one. That is in the bottom of the fourth down in Fort Myers. Over in Lakeland, Braves doubling up on the Tigers four to two. Mets lead the Astros one nothing. Top five in Port St. Lucie. That pitch bounces in the dirt. Blocked by Stallings. In the Cactus League later on today. Cleveland home to the Texas Rangers with Carlos Carrasco up against Chichi Gonzalez. Royals and Mariners, Giovanni Gallardo will be on the mound for Seattle, coming over for Seth Smith in a deal with the Baltimores. Teles takes his lead off second. The 1-1 pitch is low, ball 2, 2-1. Two and one. And you can see Teles taking an aggressive lead out there even. It seems as though he's very intent on advancing every last foot that he can to help the Blue Jays from a base running standpoint. Yeah, I love it. Not the best idea to try to steal third with two out, but he is being aggressive out there. one nothing Pirates, bottom of the fifth. Teles is at second base. Two out for Darwin Barney. And here comes a 2-1 pitch. Swung on, hit hard on the ground, but right to the shortstop. And Gope, Telez goes back to second. And the throw is to first. And the inning is over. Usually you want to see your base runners on the move with two out, but Rowdy probably would have been tagged out by the shortstop if he hadn't done that. The inning ends regardless. The Blue Jays get their first hit. They get a stolen base. But leave it right there. We go to the sixth. one nothing Pirates. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball. Hi, this is Aaron Loop. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. The sixth inning brought to you by Miller Lite, the official beer of Major League Baseball in Canada. 
and changes for the Blue Jays as we move to the sixth with the Pittsburgh Pirates leading one to nothing and out hitting the Jays six to one. There's a new pitcher for the Blue Jays. That would be Danny Barnes, who we were talking about last inning. And the infield is shaken up a bit. Barnes' first pitch to David Freeze is swung on and hit in the air deep to right center field. Back goes Polaris looking up at the wall, and it's off the base of the wall. He fires it back in, but into second with a leadoff double is Eric Wood. Pardon me, I called him David Freeze, but it's Eric Wood who came in to play third base last inning. So Wood hits that ball a long way. Welcome to the ball game. The Pirates have their second leadoff double of the afternoon. Yeah, Blar got a good read on that ball. He wasn't going to have a chance to make the catch, and so he played it off the wall very cleanly and got the ball in pretty quickly, but there was no chance of holding the Pirates to anything less than a double on that one. So here's John Jaso, a strikeout and a sack fly that has produced the game's only run. And the first pitch from Barnes is away for ball one, one and zero. Oh. The new Blue Jays infield features Jonathan Diaz. He's come in to play third. Ryan Goins has moved from short to second. Gregorio Petit has moved from third to short. Pitches outside on Jaso two and zero, oh, and Rowdy Telez, who came in to pinch run for Justin Smoke, has stayed in the game at first base. So the new Jays infield has Telez at first, Goins at second, Petit at short and Diaz at third. So the odd man out there is Darwin Barney, who was 0 for 2 today, like most of his teammates. There's a strike called on Jaso, 2 and 1. The Blue Jays have only one hit, a single by Justin Smoke, leading off the fifth. The Pirates have seven, but so far they've managed to turn them into only one run. 2-1 pitch to Jaso, swung on and chopped up the middle. Goins to his right, has it, throw to first on the run, and makes a tough play look so, so easy. One away, down to third, goes Eric Wood. Yeah, really nice play by Ryan Goins, and we've gotten so used to the defense the last few seasons, you can take it for granted. At any position around the infield, he can really contribute, even the outfield, even the pitcher's mound when asked. He's very versatile, and that's a... A key piece for the Blue Jays, or has been at least the last couple of seasons. Yeah, and he's in a real roster crunch too, Ryan Goins is. So Blue Jays pull the infield in here with a runner at third. And one out, Chris Bostic is the hitter. Right-handed batter is 0 for 1. He's walked and he's struck out, and he takes the first pitch on the inside corner for a strike 0 and 1. Yeah, it'll be tough for Ryan Goins to make this team because Darwin Barney slotted in as that backup infielder and on a team that has a lot of spots spoken for a very veteran team there just isn't a lot of room on that bench and to me I, I have a hard time figuring out how Ryan Goins makes this team barring an injury the 0-1 pitch swung on and fouled the way 0-2 it seems as though there are three spots for Goins, Darwin Barney, Ezekiel Carrera and Melvin Upton Jr. And one of those guys is not going to make this team unless there is that possibility. We haven't seen Devin Travis yet, although he's working out and he's expected to be ready for opening day. There is a chance he's not. And there's a balk. Danny Barnes just balked in a run. Danny Barnes looked in and then stepped back. I want to see the replay on TV, but it looked like he started what would be a full pitching motion and then stopped and the first base umpire all over that it is two nothing pittsburgh oh two pitch swung on and missed and barnes strikes out bostic so he gets the strikeout that he needs but there's no longer that runner at third because barnes balked him home game is on tv on sportsnet so we'll likely have an opportunity to see a replay but that's sort of when you're caught in that messy middle with a runner at third, you don't know if you're going to pitch from the stretch or the wind. And Barnes looked like he backed off, looked like he stepped back, and it was called a balk. Eric Weiss takes ball one. I guess the umpires ruled that he had started his motion in some way toward home plate. They must have. Would love another look at that, but I don't think we're going to get it. There's a swing and a miss, one and one. <laughs> So 2 nothing Pittsburgh, as the second run gets balked home. And 
Nobody on two out here on the top of the sixth. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, ball two. Gratterall wanted it, held it there for a second, but Marty Foster was not biting. Blue Jays have only one hit this afternoon. Gorgeous day here in Dunedin, and we're thrilled to be bringing you the game across the interwebs. There's a swing and a miss, two and two. And on the interwebs, you can hear us every day. Tomorrow we will be down the road in Bradenton as Lucas Harrell and Ivan Nova face off. 2-2 two -two pitch, half swing, doesn't go, and the count is full. Weiss, the DH today, has struck out twice, both times looking, once against Roberto Asuna and once against Aaron Loop. Two strikes on him here. Maybe Barnes will make it three. It is a full count. Barnes into his motion. And it's ball four outside. So Weiss works his way on. Still hasn't put a ball in play today. But now there's a runner at first with two out. For the pinch hitter, Jin D. Jang. He will more than likely stay in the catch. Jang spelled J-H-A-N-G. Left-handed hitter swings at the first pitch, and it's a ground ball to first. Rowdy Telez is on it. Step on the bag, and the inning is over. But the Pirates get a run on a leadoff double, a ground ball to get him over, and a balk to get him in. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 2-0 Pittsburgh. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Hi, it's game to catch. Nick Kingham still out there, and he delivers a first-pitch strike to Ryan Goins. The new first baseman is Joey Terdoslovich taking over for John Jaso. Alan Hansen is in at second. Max Moroff at short. 0-1 pitches. Low for a ball, 1-1. Eric Wood took over for David Freeze at third last inning. In the outfield, Barrett Barnes still out there in left and Danny Ortiz in center. Clark Egan has come in to play right field. 1-1 pitch is slugged to right field. That's it hard. Back to the track and reaching up at the wall is Egan. To haul that one in, Ryan Goins gave that thing a ride, but it's just a long, loud out to start the sixth. And I think this is where the results are less important in spring training. There are a lot of Blue Jays decision makers here, some of them sitting along the sidelines, others sitting in the stands, watching this team very closely. And it's not going to be lost on them that Ryan Goins hit that ball very hard. Squared it up good. That might be the hardest hit ball of the day by a Blue Jay, although... Anthony Alford's fly out in the second. We'll give that one a little bit of a run for its money. Now here's Gregorio Petit. Started at third. He's moved to short. He takes strike one. Petit will be depth for the Blue Jays, likely in Buffalo. It's almost impossible to imagine him breaking through that into this infield over both Barney and Goins. He takes strike two, 0 oh 2. Two nothing Pirates. We're in the bottom of the sixth. That pitch is inside. Blue Jays are looking for their first win of the spring. Their own three to start things off. One two breaking ball gets through the catcher Jang and goes all the way over the backstop and off of the roof. And that's a heck of a bounce. Two and two. Petit wears number 58, and he fouls that one off over our heads. He's 32 years old out of Venezuela. He's played parts of five seasons in the major leagues, though never more than the 89 games he played last year with the Angels when he hit 245. 2-2 two -two is strike three called. Fastball right down the gut that Petit took for the second out. 
So he has lots of big league experience. When you think about him playing in more than half of the Angels games last year, that's that's definite experience and something that the, the Jays could call on. You think of a guy like Andy Burns last year who ended up appearing in some games for the Blue Jays. There were times that they needed him for whatever reason, and this is where guys like Jake Elmore and Gregorio Petit can come in handy. Absolutely. Now here's Kevin Pillar playing into the sixth inning on back-to-back -back days, but this is only his third trip, and he takes strike one. Pilar is grounded out and walked. One of only two Blue Jays base runners today. The 0-1 is down. Ball one, one and one. We will again send people to the interwebs, even though you're already on it. So go click over to sportsnet.ca and read Ben Nicholson Smith's story about Kevin Pilar. There's a strike called, one and two. While you're there, you can read Shai Davidi's story on Freddie Freeman. The Atlanta Braves first baseman who's going to be playing first for Team Canada at the World Baseball Classic. 1-2 to Pilar is just inside. Ball two. Kingham thought he had him rung up. He was ready to walk back to the Pirates' dugout. Marty Foster said not so much. Yeah, Kingham, a promising pitcher for the Pirates. That pitch is low, and the count is full. Kevin Pilar... Once again, working himself into a favorable count for a hitter. Full count pitch is whacked into the gap in left center field. That's going to split the outfielders and go all the way to the wall. Pilar rounds first and he'll ease up and jog into second with a two-out double. Yeah, he hit that one very hard and... We were talking earlier about the ways that he's going to ease up just a little bit in spring training. If this is a regular season game, I think we see Pilar turn on the speed from the moment he sees the ball leave the bat. Instead, he went relatively easy into second base. He'll be replaced now by a pinch runner as his day is finished with a double, a walk. A very productive day for Kevin Pilar. Dwight Smith Jr. is in to run for Pilar. And yeah, with, you would think that during the regular season, Pilar would be thinking triple right out of the box, though maybe with two outs, pull up at second base, especially with Jose Bautista coming up, but he wasn't, he was very happy with a double right there. And I think the result would have been the same in the regular season. He probably wouldn't have rounded second base, but I think he still would have gone in there with the chance in case someone bobbles it in the outfield. Today, he wasn't too worried about getting that extra base. A visit to the mound from pitching coach Ray Searich here to talk to Kingham. According to Baseball America, the Number 11 prospect on the Pirates and the fourth ranked pitcher spent last year. Well, he only made eight starts last year. He's had some injury issues. Yeah, Gulf Coast League and then a couple of starts in Bradenton and a couple of starts in Altoona. Tommy John surgery in May of 2015, so working his way back. Now he's got to deal with Jose Bautista with a runner at second. Two out here in the sixth, and the Blue Jays down by two. First pitch, fastball in for a strike, 0-1. 95 out of Kingham right there. Smith takes his lead off of second. The 0-1 pitch. Half swing, does he go? Check it first, he does. Bautista doesn't think so, neither do the fans. But it's 0-2. 2 nothing Pirates here in the bottom of the six is a big at bat right here. Jose Bautista obviously has the ability to tie this game with one swing, but he's in an 0-2 hole. Here's the pitch. It's low, blocked beautifully by Jang to keep Dwight Smith Jr. at second base. Yeah, that easily could have been a chance for the Jays to get a runner on third base there. It's some nice defensive play. Crowd getting into this one, trying to will their Blue Jays into their first run of the game, maybe a couple. One-two pitch to Jose. Swung on it hard but foul down the third base side. It'll hop into the stands among a group of golden-clad Pirates fans. Made the one-hour drive up from Bradenton. And we will make that one-hour drive down tomorrow. Lucas Harrell for the Jays. Yvonne Nova for the Pirates, and we're 
live across the web at 1 o'clock. Smith the lead at second. The 1 2 pitch. Outside, ball two. On that previous pitch there, 94 miles an hour, and Batista pulled it well foul down the left field line. So still finding that timing, still trying to get that rhythm at the plate, and it can take weeks, of course, for hitters to establish that. Reached a couple of times yesterday. 2-2 two -two pitch to him, breaks his bat and lines it over second base. That's a base hit. Rounding third into score is Dwight Smith, Jr., and Jose Bautista. Has an RBI single here in the sixth. The Blue Jays are on the board, trailing 2-1. to one. And it looks like that'll be it for Batista as he exits the game for a pinch runner. Edward Olivares is in to run for him. There's the old baseball saw. That bat died a hero. Sure did. Broken bat. You could hear it transforming into kindling. You can really hear a lot from this this broadcast booth here. It's great being this close to the field. Sometimes you get to hear the umpire, the the fans. Certainly, you can hear the bats breaking. So, hopefully, that comes through on the broadcast as well. Tom Young has hooked this up with wonderful crowd microphones, so it absolutely comes through on the broadcast. That's going to be it for Nick Kingham. Couldn't get through the two innings that Clint Hurdle wanted to see out of him. It'll be Montana. But I thought that was one nice move for Arizona. And meanwhile, Seattle is going to have to hope that as Segura moves from a very friendly environment for hitters to a very tough one, that he can sustain that production or close to it. And it was, and we have to see whether it was just a one-year thing also, at least the ability to get on base consistently. All right, Montana Durapo is ready, and he'll face Juan Gratterall. And his first pitch is low for a ball, 1-0. First name Montana, and the last name is spelled D U capital R A P A U. Montana Durapo. Right hander. Where's number 85 out of the minor league camp of the Pittsburgh Pirates? Got a runner at first, and he'll throw over to check on Olivares. Twenty-four-year-old righty. This will be his fourth year pro. Pitched all of last season in Double A out of the bullpen. Runner goes. The one-zero pitch is swung on and missed. The throw down on a hop, and they get him. And that's a lesson for Edward Olivares, the base runner, caught stealing right there. He went in with his lead foot in the air and tagged on the back foot, and that's a caught stealing to end the inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. The Blue Jays get a run on two hits, an RBI single by Jose Bautista after a Kevin Pillar double. And we go to the seventh. The Jays down. Blue Jays baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Top of the seventh, the Blue Jays trail the Pittsburgh Pirates by a score of 2-1 to one and lots of changes for the Blue Jays. Here as we move to the seventh, T.J. House is in to pitch for the Jays, former Cleveland Indian, brought over as a minor league free agent. Tim Lopes has come into the game to play second base for Ryan Goins. Jonathan Diaz moves from third to short, and John Birdie comes in to play third. Dwight Smith Jr., who pinch ran for Kevin Pillar last inning, is staying in the game to play left field. Daryl Siciliani will move from left to center. House with the first pitch to the shortstop, Max Moroff. He's in with a strike, 0-1. And, and he misses with the next one. So we'll set that defense for you in a second. 1-0 from House is there for a strike. Part of me, that's the 1-1, one -one, so it's now 1-2. and two. Scoreboard says 1-1, one -one, but it's 1-2. T.J. House, a little lefty, got those socks pulled up high. One-two pitch is fought off and fouled, first base side. Still one and two. So it's House on the mound and Juan Gratterall behind the plate. 
Infield has Rowdy Telez at first, Tim Lopes at second, Jonathan Diaz at short, and John Birdie at third. There's strike three call. House rings up Moroff for the first out here in the seventh. The outfield left to right for the Blue Jays as Dwight Smith Jr., Daryl Siciliani, and Anthony Alford. Here's Clark Egan, who is one of two 88s in the game right now for the Pittsburgh Pirates which makes our job so much easier. Left-handed hitter takes the first pitch away for ball one. When you have 88 without the name, it almost looks like the BB you see on Bat Boys sometimes. <laughs> it's very true. There's a strike called one and one The other 88 in the game actually has the name on his back, so that's the easy way to tell them apart. Also, Joey Tardoslovich is like twice this guy's size. There's a foul ball into the camera bay, one and two. T.J. House came over in the early part of the offseason, back when everyone was getting all worried that the Blue Jays weren't going to sign any relievers. So part of the left-hander mix that will be down in AAA, that pitch is away, ball two, two and two. House and Jeff Beliveau were brought in early before the Blue Jays signed J.P. Howell. Yeah, exactly, and, and House is someone who actually has some experience starting. That's where he had most of his big league success. 2-2 two -two pitch grounded back up the middle. Over to get it is Tim Lopes at second. He'll throw to first, and that's the second out. The Bringer of Rain umbrella presented by Sonic will be handed out Sunday, April 16th, when the Blue Jays host the Baltimore Orioles at 1.07 p.m. Eastern. That's the first Sunday home game of the regular season. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Bringer of Rain umbrella. Get your tickets at BlueJays.com. Here's Danny Ortiz. Left on left, and he takes the first pitch low for ball one. So House is, with the starting experience, you try to put together your AAA rotation. You've probably got Lucas Harrell down there. Brett Oberholzer is probably down there. Maybe House at some point in time. I think Ryan barucki has got a shot to be in that. There's a ball, 2-0. I don't know if maybe Connor Green on the way up gets to AAA, maybe not to start the season. Yeah, he had a rough debut yesterday. John Gibbons talking to him today. 2-0 is in there for a strike, 2-1. and one. Just to remind him that these things happen, and of course he's still very well regarded by the organization. But I do think, as, as we talked about yesterday, those walks can be an issue. And so he's going to have to show the Blue Jays that he can really attack the strike zone. 2-1 pitch is swung on and missed, 2-2. Two and, two. and Casey Lawrence has a chance to be in that AAA rotation as well. And he's an interesting story. Guy who, at 29, all of a sudden is becoming, a, a getting on some people's radars. Started Saturday, looked terrific. 2-2 two -two pitches, hit on the ground, foul, first base side. House over there to cover just in case. And guys like Harrell and House and Oberholzer are those placeholders while the starting the young starting pitching that the Blue Jays have continues to go on its way up and get ready to pitch in AAA. Just like Wade LeBlanc last year. Yep. 2-2 two -two pitch. His low ball three. Randy Wolf the year before. Or maybe two years before. I think the year before. We're in the top of the seventh inning. A 3-2 pitch with two out is swung on and chopped high on the infield. Charging at Diaz, and he can't make the transfer. John Diaz knew he had to move awfully quickly. And that ball just a little faster than the hands right there. And Danny Ortiz has an infield single. Yeah, as soon as that ball left the bat, you knew that it was going to be a very hard play for Diaz. Came in charging and just tried to make that release quickly because there's no other way to make it. You can't set your feet. You can't plant and throw. And it was ultimately just going to go for a big infield hit. It brings up Barrett Barnes. And he takes a first pitch strike. Barnes came in to take over for Gregory Polanco, who is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts around a walk. House checks his runner. The 0-1 pitch is low. He 
Yeah, House last year started 12 games at AAA, but also pitched out of the bullpen extensively. So he gives them some versatility as far as what kind of role they end up using him in. Throw over to first. Back safely is the runner, Ortiz. Our first look at TJ House this spring. Stares down the runner. Here's the 1-1 pitch. It swung on and whacked left field. That's hit a ton, but it's hooking foul. And it will wind up way foul and way out of here. Barrett Barnes put a charge into that one, but it's a long strike. That might be the new leader for best hit ball of the afternoon. That was pummel. But the only result is now T.J. House is ahead in the count. They'll check the runner at first, and the one-two pitch is inside. And the count is even two and two. Two-one Pirates, top of the seventh. They've out hit the Blue Jays 8-3 in a so far error-free game in the sunshine in Dunedin. Two-two pitch is swung on fouled into the glove of Juan Gratterall. And that is good for strike three. So TJ House gives up not but an infield single in the top of the seventh. It is stretch time at the face for the Blue Jays trailing the Pirates two to one. You're listening to Blue Jays baseball. On the sport comes in. Edward Olivares gets caught stealing and his day is done. Productive in a sense. Yeah, I mean, did his job. Any of us could have done that, though. Juan Gratterall takes the first pitch up from Clay Holmes. Ball one. Gratterall was at the plate when Olivares got caught stealing. The 1-0 pitch is a called strike, 1-1. One one. It's not like a pitcher comes in and picks a guy off and he's done. At least he did something. All that Durapo got to do was give his catcher a good ball to throw. Mound presence. <laughs> Swing and a miss by Gratterall. 1-1. One one. Mound presence. Holmes is another one of the top pitching prospects for the Pirates. And Gratterall fouls that ball off. Juan Gratterall picked up again before the Blue Jays signed Jared Saltalamacchia. Claimed him on waivers from the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. 1-2 pitches fouled away. Another guy with big league experience at AAA. And again, we'll say this over and over this spring. You can't have enough of those players. Yeah, exactly. And especially, you know, you look at the catching position. How much wear and tear it takes on these guys. And even though the Blue Jays have a front two that I think they're very comfortable with, more than comfortable with, you want to have these depth options. When two pitches swung on and missed, Gratterall strikes out. And that's the first out here in the seventh inning. Especially losing A.J. Jimenez now a member of the Texas Rangers organization, and you have to have some catchers. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. When you're trying to get through a long season, trying to get through spring training even, you need those guys, and that's where Gratterall comes in, Reese McGuire as well, someone who will get extended looks probably in the upper minors. Yeah, and Mike Ullman as well is a guy almost nobody has heard of, a catcher from the Cardinals organization, came in as a minor league free agent. Rowdy Teles takes strike one, doesn't like that call, shows his displeasure there. At Marty Foster. Not necessarily a good idea when you're the guy with no big league time. Rowdy came in as a pinch runner in the fifth. He takes that pitch way up and away. Had a terrific game on Saturday in the opener at Disney World. He walked. He had a ringing double. But he has struck out in his last four straight spring at-bats. 1-1 one, one pitches whack to left field. He's not going to strike out this time. This thing drops fair, and it's headed for the corner. Telez rounds first. He is into second. And so much for that 0 for 4. It's a one-out double here in the seventh. 97-mile-an-hour fastball. Telez takes it the opposite field. He got a good swing on that ball and just meets it, lets the bat meet the ball, and it ends up going for a double on a very nice piece of hitting by a rookie player trying to establish himself here on the Blue Jays' radar. And he has certainly 
make, continuing to make a strong impression. And how about this? Talked about the big game that he had on Saturday that led John Gibbons to tell us yesterday he's the closest prospect to the big leagues. Gibby was here yesterday, and Teles struck out three times in Tampa. So Gibby didn't see that. All he's seen is a couple of big, loud doubles and a walk. Great timing. It's perfect timing. Now here's Daryl Siciliani, flied out to the track in right field in his last at bat. And he takes the first pitch low, ball one. Usually we stick to baseball here, but when big news happens, big news happens. And if people are on the web, they may already know, but if you don't, the Raptors just announcing that Kyle Lowry is going to undergo surgery tomorrow to, lo to remove loose bodies from his right wrist, and they hope to have him back for the playoffs. 1-0 is a big swing and a miss, 1-1. One and one. That is what one might refer to as a rather big blow for the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, by many estimations, their best player, one of their top players, clearly. So that's a, that's a blow. They'll have to survive the next couple of months. I mean, there's no question they're going to make the playoffs. If he can come back for the playoffs, they'll be just as strong. 1-1 one, one pitch is whacked hard on the ground at first. Tardoslovich has it. He'll step on the bag for the second out. Down to third comes Rowdy Teles. And the tying run is 90 feet away with two out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So we wish Lowry well, that the surgery is successful and the recovery is quick. And that he will be back on the floor for the Raptors in the postseason. Anthony Alford takes a first pitch strike from Holmes. Alford is 0 for 2. He flied out and he's struck out. The Blue Jays down 2-1 here in the bottom of the seventh looking for their first win of the spring. And Rowdy Telez, the tying run, standing at third base. 0-1 pitch. In there for a strike 0-2. A couple of the Jays' top prospects here trying to tie the game up. Telez on third. Alfred at the plate. Alfred has called this ballpark home the last couple of seasons. 0-2 pitch is swung on and missed. Got him with a breaking ball. And the inning is over. So the one-out double by Rowdy Telez stays at third base. And we go to the eighth. The Blue Jays continue to trail the Pittsburgh Pirates by a score of 2-1. to one. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network and MLB.com. Smith here with you, and we'll be here all week. Try the veal. There's a strike called 0-2. Some changes for the Blue Jays here. The new catcher, another one, Danny Jansen, is in. After Juan Gratterall caught both. He's actually caught three days in a row. That pitch is up, ball one, one and two. Jared Saltalamakia cat started and caught yesterday as well. New center fielder is J.B. Woodman taking over for Daryl Siciliani. There's a line drive to second, snared by Tim Lopes. Nice play to his left for the first out. The new right fielder is Josh Palacios. So the outfield left to right now for the Blue Jays, Dwight Smith Jr. in left. J.B. Woodman in center and Josh Palacios in right field. Here's Joey Turdoslovich. Big right-handed hitter. Whacks the first pitch foul. For strike one. First base coach, Camara Barti, faked like he was going to barehand that one. That would hurt a lot. 0-1 pitch foul right back our way, 0-2. Do you remember Camara Barti? Does the name ring a bell? It does ring a bell. I couldn't tell you much about him, but the name rings a bell. I want to say he played for the Orioles. No, the Tigers and... Played for the Tigers. There's a ground ball to third. John Birdie has it. Throw it on to first. Two down. may even have been a teammate of Joe Siddle's in Detroit. 157 games in center field over six seasons in the major leagues. 
Of course, I could have just turned the page and seen all that. We'll have to ask Joe. Yeah, we'll have to ask Joe. He's right next door. Second baseman Alan Hansen is in, shows bunt and pulls the bat back. Takes ball one. So two quick outs here for TJ House in his second inning of work. Gave up notch but an infield single in the top of the seventh. 1-0 pitch, grounded right back up the middle, off the glove of House. But right there is Lopes. Throw to first for your textbook, 1-4-3. So a good outing here for TJ House, throwing a shutout seventh and eighth. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. Continues to be Pittsburgh 2 and Toronto 1. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network. Hi, it's Pat Finelli with our 50th opportunities and events all geared towards fans of the Toronto Blue Jays. Visit jayscare.com slash YP today. Jonathan Diaz leads off the bottom of the eighth here and takes a strike with the Blue Jays down 2-1 to one to the Pittsburgh Pirates. And he takes strike 2-0-2. Two, oh two. Diaz has been around a long time. Cut his teeth in the Blue Jays organization. Made his big league debut with the Jays. Won a World Series ring with the Red Sox. That pitch over his head for ball one. And Diaz stares out at Clay Holmes. Jays brought him back on a minor league contract this offseason. He'll provide depth in the middle infield. We've been saying that about a few guys today. Yeah. And you know what? The more the better, especially, again, ones with major league experience. Diaz, an absolute wizard with the glove. One two pitch, swung on and missed. He strikes out. And that's a first out here in the eighth. If the Jays are going to come back and pick up their first spring win today, it's going to be on the backs of the kids. All the starters long since out of this one. Now here's John Birdie. Came into play third a couple of innings ago. This is his first at bat. And he takes a first pitch strike, 0-1. He had a nice defensive play earlier, and really this game to this point has been very nicely nicely done on the defensive side from the Blue Jays. Pirates, too, for that matter. Well, one pitch is high. And it stands in stark contrast to what we saw yesterday. The Blue Jays had a really rough time. One-one pitch to Birdie is taken for a strike, one and two. We see through the chain link fence in right field that Matt Dermody is warming up in the Blue Jays' bullpen. So he's likely to get the ninth. His first appearance of the spring. One-two curveball, bounce back up the middle. Holmes with a nice play on the mound to get it. Toss to first, underhand, for the second out. Had to reach back over his face to snare that ball. Yeah, even the pitcher is getting in on the defense today. Marcus Stroman, early in the game, making a very nice play towards second base, having to go back on the ball and make a play at first. Now Tim Lopes. And again, in one of the wonders of spring training, one of two Blue Jays currently in this game wearing number 74. We get the attendance figure from Eric Grossman, 3,538 here at the ballpark. It's a 1-1 count now on Lopes as he takes a ball and then a strike. Tim Lopes coming over in the offseason from the Seattle Mariners as a player to be named later in a trade that sent Pat Vendetti to Seattle. 1-1 one, one is down and away, ball two. It's one thing I'll miss this spring. It's not having the chance to watch an ambidextrous pitcher every few days. That was really, I mean, we had last year, we had uh, an amphibious pitcher, and we had a knuckleballer, and yeah. two of the great wonders of the game, and now we don't have either one. 2-1 one pitch is high, and it's ball three on Lopes, trying to work his way on for Dwight Smith Jr. Here with two out and nobody on in the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Blue Jays down 2-1 to Pittsburgh. 3-1 pitches, low ball four. Lopes lives up to that 360 on base that he had last year in the minors for Seattle in double A. 
draws a two-out walk, and Dwight Smith Jr. will have a chance. The Pirates shifting for Smith. The shortstop, Max Moroff, moving close to second base, and Alan Hansen at second, closing up that 3-4 hole with Lopes being held on by Terdoslovich. Left-handed batter is Dwight Smith, Jr., and he takes a pitch down. It gets away from Jang, but not very far, and not far enough for Lopes to advance. Ball one. Looks like catcher Reese McGuire is on deck, should the inning advance that far. That's the DH spot. Jose Bautista started and went one for three. Bautista with an RBI single, driving in the Blue Jays' only run of this game. The Pirates scored on a sack fly by John Jaso in the fourth, and a Danny Barnes balk in the sixth. 1-0 pitch. There for a strike, 1-1. This is one of those games that if it was the regular season and you're thinking about potentially losing a game on a balk, that would be painful, but very much less so here in a spring training affair. Absolutely. The wins and losses don't mean a thing. Process over performance. That's the story of the spring. Lopes takes a healthy lead. He's leaning. Not going. The pitch is swung on and missed. A big rip by Smith. And it's one and two. Dwight Smith just tried to put the Blue Jays on top with one swing right there. And Holmes threw it by him. Clay Holmes comes set. A throw over to first and Lopes is back safely. I mentioned he's one of two 74s in the game. He's also one of two Lopeses that the Blue Jays have used this spring. There's Christian Lopes as well. Neither of them are officially in big league camp. So minor league call-ups, just like Dwight Smith. Another throw to first, and again back safely is Tim Lopes. Who knew that of all the numbers, 74 and 88 would be the most coveted? Seriously. Multiples of each in this game. Lopes takes a healthy lead again. Not going. One, two pitches. A breaking ball that misses away. And Holmes gets a nice pitch there from Jang behind the plate. Smith wasn't chasing. Blue Jays down 2-1, bottom of the eighth, runner of first and two out. Another 2-2 pitch to Smith. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. So the two-out walk is stranded, and we head to the ninth. The Jays trail the Pittsburgh Pirates 2-1. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network and MLB. The Power Workers Union is proud to welcome the highly skilled workforce at Toronto Hydro into our membership. Night or day. Pirates, 7-8-9 hitters. The Pirates enjoying a 2-1 lead. They scored first in the fourth inning, a leadoff double by Starling Marte, and then a walk to Gregory Polanco. David Fries struck out, but then... Marte and Polanco executed a double steal with John Jaso at the plate. And Jaso then delivered a sacrifice fly. And a, uh, an Eric Wood double was eventually balked home by Danny Barnes for the Pirates' second run in the sixth. The Jays' only run coming in the bottom of the sixth inning. A two-out double by Kevin Pillar scored on a single by Jose Bautista. Matt Dermody misses with his first pitch to the pinch hitter, Kevin Newman. And he's inside with the next one, 2-0. Newman pinch hitting for the DH, Eric Weiss, who was 0-2 for with a walk and a couple of strikeouts. And we mentioned last inning, Ben, that there were two Lopeses on the Blue Jays, and now they're both in the game in the middle infield. 2-0 pitch inside, ball 3, 3-0. Tim Lopes is at second. Christian Lopes Pardon me, Tim Lopes was at second, moved to short. Christian Lopes is in at second. The 3-0 pitch, strike one. Dermody is definitely a guy we need to keep an eye on this spring. We'll watch the uh, 
Iowa native. 3-1 pitches whacked up the middle. That's a base hit. He threaded the Lopeses there. Let's see if we can get that into the lexicon. A leadoff single for Kevin Newman. Dermody started here last year, down in single A Dunedin, and wound up in the big leagues. Not something you see very often. Pretty impressive, and like you said, he is someone that should belong on that big league radar with minor league options remaining, maybe not a candidate for opening date, but he's left-handed, he's had success, made it up to the big leagues last year. Jin De Zhang takes the first pitch for a strike from Dermody, left on left. Aaron Loop giving up the Blue Jays' first run. And we'll be contrasting, I think, Loop and Dermody most of the spring. It looks like they may be fighting for the same position, whether it's here or in Buffalo. A one pitch hit on the ground, wide of first, under the glove of Telez. Picked up by Lopes, fired to the pitcher, but Dermody dropped it. Everybody safe. Great effort by Telez there to get to that ball, knock it down, and then he had to throw it from his side. So it's a tough play to make as a right-handed thrower. He's trying to throw it to Dermody on the run. The throw wasn't actually that bad, but it was hard for Dermody to, to corral, and the runner ends up reaching. That is a tough call, giving Matt Dermody an error on that play. Uh, but Matt Dermody will get an error on that play. It was a, a wonderful play by Christian Lopes to get to the ball. But the throw made Dermody stretch, and it popped in and out of his glove, but certainly by no means a routine play. Regardless of whether it's a single or an error, there are runners at first and second with nobody out for Max Moroff. Struck out looking in his first trip, and he takes strike one here from Dermody. Phenomenal effort by Christian Lopes at second base. Trying to hit Dermody on the run and made a good throw, not a great throw. But I don't know if it's a good enough throw that you give Dermody an error for that. The 0-1, swung on pop, foul, 0-2. Could just call it a hit, too. That's what it is for me. But regardless, again, spring training, none of it matters. What matters now is Dermody trying to pitch his way out of this. And he's ahead of Max Moore off 0-2. Runners at first and second, nobody out, top of the ninth. Blue Jays down 2-1. The pitch, down and in, blocked by Jansen, and the runners will hold. Blue Jays and Pirates get back at it tomorrow in Bradenton. It'll be Lucas Harrell on the hill for the Jays, a former Houston Astro, up against Pittsburgh's Ivan Nova, the former New York Yankee. We will be live on the World Wide Web at 1 o'clock. So join us then. One, two to more off, down and in again, and again blocked by Jansen. And Dermody just can't get him to chase that back foot breaking ball. Yeah, a little reminiscent of Aaron Loop, who had a rough inning earlier in this game, dealing with some command issues, it looked like. And Dermody trying to find his footing, too, as so many players are this time of spring. Takes a look at the runner. The 2-2 pitch has popped up. <coughs> Lopes, the shortstop, is under it. Backing up makes the catch with the infield fly rule in effect. As Lopes, the second baseman, looks on. And that's one of the three things that a pitcher absolutely loves in a situation like this. You want a strikeout, a pop-up, or a double play ball. Yeah, those pop-ups fly under the radar for me. I, I think that as a hitter, they're definitely a knock against you. As a pitcher, it can be a sneaky skill. We see Marco Estrada do that all the time. And to me, it's it's really underrated because it, it's not as impressive. You're not going to see a highlight reel of pop-ups, but it does the job. Now here's Clark Egan. He swings and he fouls the ball at the plate for strike one. Egan came in for Yuri Perez, and he grounded out to second in his first at bat. And I wonder if that's something that people will start looking at. We look at line drive rate a lot for hitters. Look at pop-up rate for pitchers. Marco Estrada among the league leaders in that department. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on, hit on the ground to second. Lopes has it. Flip to Lopes for one, back to first. Not in time. Egan beats it out. 
Big stretch by Rowdy Telez to try to get that inning-ending double play, but the ball just wasn't hit hard enough. Nice combination between Lopes and Lopes up the middle, and there's two out. They got some good chemistry. They really do. You would hope so. No relation. Christian Lopes at second, Tim Lopes at third. That's short. And now here's Danny Ortiz. He's two for two. A couple of ground ball singles. Took over for Starling Marte, who doubled and scored in the fourth. Blue Jays are down two to one here in the top of the ninth. Two out, two on. First pitch from Dermody is just low for ball one. Checking that out-of-town scoreboard, we mentioned earlier some basketball as Kyle Lowry is going to go under the knife to have some loose bodies removed from his wrist and will be out until at least the playoffs, at least the beginning of the playoffs. 1-0 pitch in there for a strike. 1-1. One and, one. and on the ice, Sportsnet's Chris Johnson and John Shannon both reporting that the Maple Leafs are about to acquire Brian Boyle. And he's likely to join the team for their game against the San Jose Sharks. 1-1 one, one pitch is fouled away 1-2. and two. Baseball news, Addison Russell has taken Lucas Giolito deep, and the Chicago Cubs lead the Chicago White Sox. 1-0 in the bottom of the second over in Arizona. Dermody ahead of Danny Ortiz, one and two, the left-on-left -left battle. Check of the runner, the pitch. Swung on a little nubber out towards third, birdie charging hard. Throw on the run, and a nice play to end the inning. So Matt Dermody, with two on and nobody out, works his way out of it. And we go to the bottom of the ninth, last shot for the Blue Jays. As they try to at least tie this thing up, they trail the Pittsburgh Pirates, two to four, Mike Wilner and... Ben Nicholson-Smith here with us. With you, actually. We are with you. Ben is with us. Or something. I mean, however it works out. He's, he's here, I'm here, and we are thrilled to be bringing you spring training baseball. Live from Dunedin. And again, every game all spring long will be carried on the World Wide Web. Ben is with me today and for the next three Including tomorrow in Bradenton, the Jays and Pirates go at it again. Reese McGuire is on, and he takes the first pitch for a strike, 0 and 1. McGuire, this is his first spring training not in black and gold, coming over from the Pirates on a trade deadline day deal. The 0 1 pitch is swung on and missed, 0 and 2, so he gets a chance to play against some of his buddies. Someone who's very well regarded defensively, and I'm curious to see what he can do with the bat in the course of the spring, see where he stands offensively. I'm sure that a lot of the people with the Blue Jays are as well. He's in a hole 0 2 here. The pitch is high, ball one. This is the Jose Bautista spot in the order. Bautista struck out in his first two at bats, but then in the sixth, with a Kevin Pillar double on and two outs, delivered a broken bat single up the middle. For the Blue Jays' only run so far, they're down 2-1 here in the bottom of the ninth. McGuire looks at strike three. Nice curveball from Rosario. And there's one away. Here's Danny Jansen. The Blue Jays' third catcher of the afternoon. Right-handed hitter, one of two Jays wearing number 74 in this game. He takes strike one. A lot of catchers getting some action today when you include Reese McGuire. Russell Martin, really the only one sitting things out. Yeah, a total of four catchers for the Blue Jays playing in this game. There's a strike called 0-2 on Danny Jansen. It's his second at bat of the spring. He got in in Tampa yesterday. Rosario just here pumping strikes in the ninth. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out. 
We will bid adieu to Ben Nicholson Smith. Thank you for this. We'll see you tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Ben's got to go down and talk to John Gibbons, get the post game. So I'll handle things from here. If Rowdy Telez ties it up, Ben will come back. Here is Rowdy Telez. Doubled in his only other trip today. Also stole a base as a pinch runner. And he takes a first pitch in the dirt, ball one. So no immaculate inning here for Miguel Rosario. He had had two strikeouts on six pitches, but now falls behind Telez, 1-0. Rowdy, a big slugging first baseman, wears number one. The pitch to him is a big swing and a miss. Missed an off-speed pitch, and it's 1-1. One one. Telez likely to start the season at Triple A Buffalo. Takes a 1 1 pitch inside. Could argue he is the Blue Jays' top hitting prospect, Anthony Alf. Now the count is full. Two out, bottom of the ninth. Nobody on. Blue Jays down one. The pitch. Ball four outside. Rosario with a full count curveball. Missed with it. And Rowdy takes a walk. It brings up J.B. Woodman. J.B. Woodman coming up. A call up from the minor league complex. Chance to be a hero. And he takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Woodman wears number 78, left-handed hitter. Second round pick of the Blue Jays just last year. He swings and he hits a ball in the air to right field. That's it hard and deep, but just not deep enough. Run down in front of the track by Danny Ortiz, and the game is over. The kid put a charge into one, but it falls just short. And the Blue Jays fall to 0-4 on the spring, losing it 2-1 to to the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll be back with the totals after this. You're listening to Blue Jays Baseball on the Sportsnet Radio Network and MLB.com. Louis Carnivelli here, president of Northern Financial Group. You've probably been thinking that our health benefits plan for just $30 a month sounds too good to be true. Well, you can take it from me. It is true, and our rates are set until September 2018. Don't wait until your next renewal. Whether you have three or 300 employees, we have a plan to fit your needs and your budget. To find out more about our $30 a month health plan, visit us at northernfinancialgroup.ca.